Hey, Miss Jen, how are you? Hey. hey. So hey. good. What's better than two of us? Oh my gosh. Three of us. Three. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> And, oh, this, yeah. and this third person is, <laughs> I don't even know what I'm saying anymore, is the Jennifer Gittimer, <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Ah. author of Sales in a New York Minute. Yes. Complete sales badass, if I may. Yeah. Yes. You may. <laughs> hey, how'd you get a forward by Jeffrey Gittimer? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> how'd that happen? <laughs> what, is, what had to happen for that to happen? That's what I want to know. It cost too much. Oh. <laughs> yes. So, Jen, thank you so much for joining us. I met you through Honoré. Uh, it's one of the only times Honoré just sent an email and said, dude, you have to meet this person. I'm not saying anything. Connect. And I was <laughs> like, oh. And then we talked and I was just like, I love her. And I remember you and I were having our first conversation and you, and you said something really funny. I did. You said, I can't remember why Honoré connected us, but I sure am glad she did. <laughs> <laughs> I said, me too. <laughs> Wait, oh on. man. Yeah. It was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so Jen, tell everyone a little bit more about you. I mean, I can brag endlessly about how amazing you are at the topic of sales, um, which is not something that is my forte, um, but it's something I'm very comfortable with now that I've spent some time learning about it. But man, was that like a scary thing for me when I stepped into this world. So can you tell people a little bit more about you and your sales background and everything? Yeah, of course. So I started selling when I was about five years old. And I, a lot of people, when they start their own business, they're really passionate about that thing. So you write a book, you're passionate about your book or your topic. Um, you have some sort of skill or expertise that is amazing. That's why you start the business. But they don't teach sales in schools, at least not most schools. And most people don't grow up learning sales. And at, at age five, my mom had me selling. Like she, she was in sales and my family owned a business and they recognized the importance of selling. And I was sitting outside the grocery store because who, what five-year-old really loves grocery shopping. And my grandma would take me on, on the weekends and I would sit outside and sell bracelets. And I realized very quickly, no one really cared about the bracelet that I liked. Like if I liked pink and purple together, that didn't matter to them. But if their college colors were orange and blue, then or orange and white, like that's what they wanted. And so I, I would ask people like, what colors are important to you? And I would, they would go do their grocery shopping. And if I couldn't make their bracelet while they were shopping, mind you, I charged like two or three dollars, right? But if I couldn't do it in that time, they would come back and pick it up the following week. So I had this little business selling bracelets and it just evolved from there. I sold cut cone knives, I sold educational software and eventually went out to start this business where I teach people how to make more sales. Awesome. So was there a video of five-year-old Jen selling bracelets outside of the grocery store? Because I feel like that needs to be your reel. I feel like that too. And I wish I could go back and recreate it. I don't think there's any video. My parents thought it was so normal that it wasn't like, look, this is so cool. Let's take a mm -hmm. video of it. It was more like, this is what you do. <laughs> well, yeah, that's a bummer because I could totally see that being your intro. I agree. Video. I agree. I'll have to ask though. I've never asked. <laughs> yeah. Well, I first heard about that story in the beginning of your of your book, um, Sales in a New York Minute, which by the way, shout out to 212. <laughs> the, old, the old zip code of choice in the area, area there. Area code, sorry. Thank you, Honoré. <laughs> the, the zip code is 10021. That was mine. Mm-hmm. One of many, yay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um I just I just love I've I've bragged endlessly to you about this. A the message. Uh there's just so much knowledge in this little book. But this book is of such quality. Um I just absolutely love using this as an example in my courses of like the difference between, you know, picking up someone's book and wanting to buy it based off of your initial experience with it, and then picking up a book that is not maybe so so well published and 
you're like, okay, I'm not impressed. I'm just going to go ahead and set this down. Maybe it's a better story for someone else. And um, so I, I think that that kind of was a flag for me about the kind of quality you bring to the table when it comes to everything you touch. Your your books are outstanding. Um, your courses, I haven't been able to experience all of them, but I was in one of your groups, just fantastic. And I think just sales is like one of those things that people stub their toe on and the pain never seems to stop unless they get comfortable with it, right? It's like they have to get confident in it and helping someone get confident in something like that's a little bit more challenging than maybe giving them a framework to develop a course with, or it's a, it's a very, it's an internal thing. Um, can you talk a little bit about like how people can view overcoming that in their, in their early time as an entrepreneur? Yeah. So it starts with belief. So you have to believe that you offer a product or service that can help someone. Mm -hmm. And when you, a lot of times people make it about themselves, like, Oh, charge your worth. You know, it's, it's not about you. It's about the outcome that you offer to your clients and potential clients. And so what is that outcome worth to them and how quickly can you get it? How quickly can you help them win, profit, make more money, um, reduce their cost, whatever you're trying to help them do? And so it begins with, if you, if you really want to be good at selling, it begins with believing, A, that you can be good at selling, and B, believing in that outcome that you help others with. And so I have a lot of clients that have come to me and they're like, well, how do I strengthen that belief in the outcome? Go talk to people that you've helped. And if you haven't helped people, go help someone <laughs> because you need to have that belief in order to transfer that belief to other people. It will not get transferred. People will sniff it, right? They'll, they'll smell it that, that you don't actually believe you can help them. And then why would they work with you? It's not like something you show up and say, I believe I can help you. I swear. I promise. I know. Like, it's just you, when you have that internal belief, you begin to exude confidence and an attitude and like an attitude that, that you can help them. And so that's where I would begin. And so ta let's circle back just for a minute about where does the role of charging what you're worth go? Where, where is that thought process? Because I think that that's a real challenge for people, right? It's like, if I, sure. if I, if, if selling is hard, then charging what I'm worth is even harder. <laughs> yeah. right? So where does, where does it go in the order of operations in your mind? Yeah. So you have to believe that you offer the best products and services. You have to believe that you can help your client win. You have to believe in yourself. And then once you have that belief down, now you need to be able to communicate and message your offer in a way that makes people want to buy in a way that makes people raise their hand and say, wow, that's really like I, I stopped the scroll. I stopped whatever I was doing and read your email. You made them stop and think in terms of you and your offer and respond in some way. Now, pricing comes into a buying decision, right? People don't even care about price in the beginning. They care about like, what is this going to do? If I pick up this book, what is it going to do for me? Mm -hmm. they're, not, they're not like, well, how much is this book? If they don't know if it can help them. So first it's about your belief so you can transfer that. Then it's about actually communicating the value and the offer. And then you will have already thought through your pricing. And the it's to me, it's not about charging what you're worth. It's about charging what that outcome is worth for your client mm -hmm. and thinking through um, what's the time frame in which I can get my client this outcome. So is it worth something more? For example, if I can help, if Lucas can help me build a course and we can and do he it can. Over, and he can, <laughs> and he so, can. So Lucas can, Lucas, you can help me build a course. What's the normal time frame it takes to build a course? If you have no material developed when we start, mm -hmm. one to three months. Okay. Yeah. So let's say I come to you and I say, Lucas, I want to build a course in the next two weeks. You're going to charge me more to drop everything you're doing and focus on me for the, or my offer for the next two weeks. And guess what? That's worth more money yeah. for me to have something right now than to wait three months from now. So right. you could look at your offer and say, okay, the outcome is worth this, 
But if we condense the timeline and do it in a VIP day or we do it in a shorter amount of time, it's actually worth more money. Yep. Oh, yeah. I need you to just repeat that one more time for all of my future clients. Like, just kidding. But I do have some Yeah. <laughs> I do have some people that contact me and they're like, can we get this done in the next two weeks? And I'm like, do you have everything recorded? I mean, because that's, you know, that's a very time consuming thing. And even then you're 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 pinched to do that. But I'm I'm glad you bring that up because um I I feel like there's a misunderstanding about value in our space um, as far as this is mostly service based, obviously, that I'm talking about. But uh, because I I think that like, see, how do I how do I put this without sounding like a complete maniac? (laughs) So uh, people are very used to paying for time when they're dealing with services. Right. It's Mm -hmm. like they're thinking about time, like I'm paying by the hour. And it's very hard for people to understand, like, no, that's Mm -hmm. not what we're doing here. Um, you're moving toward an outcome, right? You're buying an outcome. I'm selling an outcome. That outcome's worth a certain amount of money. So that's where service-based business owners, in my opinion, get themselves in trouble. Because you're, if you're selling by the hour, well, guess what? What's the only thing in our world that's really finite? It's time, right? So you only have a certain amount of time to get stuff done. And so if you're charging by the hour, you can't create more hours. Yeah, you can raise your prices, but you can double your prices and have half your clients, and that might be a way to grow, but that that's only going to work for so long. And so rather than charging by the hour, it to me, it's about charging by the outcome, like you just said. And so it's the same for Honoré, right? Like, Honoré, what, what's the timeline it takes for someone to write a book with you? They I'll hire you. The, I'll give you the lawyer book. answer. It depends. Um, <laughs> my standard my standard contract for me to help someone to write their book, including a ghostwriter, right? If either they are writing the book or we have a ghostwriter is 12 months. Now I know that if I'm using a ghostwriter and I'm using one of the ghostwriters I prefer, they're going to write the book in four months and we can be completely ready to launch the book in not build in a little bit of extra for, slackers and procrastinators. I'm just saying, I'm not calling anybody out. I'm just saying it can take that much time or more, but I have done a book in about 87 days, 85, 87 days, because someone had a Ted talk and they wanted a book to go with their Ted talk and the book was edited. So the, the, the material was done and it had been edited and I used the air quotes because it wasn't by an editor. It was by someone who was like, oh, I had someone edit the book. Well, is their job, like is their full-time job that they do or their business, are they editors? Well, no, it's just someone who reads a lot. Well, that's not an editor. So we had to put it through its paces, <laughs> but I was able to do it expeditiously for an expedited fee, right? If you get, if you want it done faster, you're gonna charge more. And that's the thing that the value to them, what, what missed opportunities would they have had if they had waited to have their book and they said at their Ted talk, I promise my book's coming out in like three months versus like, here's my book, right? Here's my book. You can get it today. Boom. Right. Do you have a business card? No, but I have a book. Right. Right. So they, they understood the value and in, and when you're figuring out your own pricing, you have to figure out what is the value to your client, especially to have it if they want it expedited. Yes. And so we could go off on what is the opportunity cost for not having a book, but I would be remiss if I didn't say hi to your editor and mine. Karen hi, Karen. <laughs> yeah. And soon to be mine. <laughs> yes. Well, that's who I meant. Your editor and, oh. and Lucas's and hopefully anyone watching. <laughs> Although I just booked her for, I think, what did I book you for? July and September? Yeah, I think I've got her booked for two. My next. She's busy. She's about to get one, and I have the next two on her calendar. She's yeah, getting gotta... very busy, and I will not be denied. <laughs> <laughs> you know what that means, Karen. That means, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have to say yes to Honoré and, and, and tell Marina to go find a video and oh there we go she goes yes she's excited <laughs> yeah Jen, get him her. oh cool 
Yeah, Karen and I spoke on the phone yesterday, but we didn't see each other's faces. So, <laughs> ah. yeah. yeah, isn't that great? Um, yeah. So, so Jen, I, I can't, I can't help but like reflect on on the fact that I hired a sales coach, which is fantastic, by the way. Her name's Lisbeth Halen. She was awesome um, to help me out when I first got started. I wish I had done that much sooner. I think I waited about a year and a half, two years in business before I hired a sales coach, which now I look back at what was I thinking? That should have been one of my very first investments once I had something to sell. Um, because I could not understand, uh, not that I did a lot of research on this at that point, but like most business owners, I was just so overwhelmed with like getting everything built and launched and getting the word out that I had a hard time seeing the difference between marketing and sales. Mm. And I had to work on that a bit, like figuring out how to separate those two. But they're, you know, obviously they're they're dependent on each other, they're interdependent. So can you talk a little bit about like the difference men mentally, like on approaching sales versus marketing? Yeah. And so just to to go off what you're saying, like if you're starting a business, you can have sales, you can make sales without having all the marketing materials ready. And to me, that's a big pitfall of a lot of newer entrepreneurs is they invest all their time and money into marketing. What do I mean by that? Building a website, building out their social medias, making everything look so freaking pretty. Look, I love branding. I love making it look nice. I mean, you can see that, right? Like, yeah. like design is important to me okay however you can make sales before any of that comes and and i made this mistake when i started my business in 2013 the first i knew how to sell but i invested a lot of money into building a website and back then websites were way more expensive than they are now and i'm pretty sure they used a template so but i've learned a lot since then <laughs> <laughs> um and I spent a lot of money on social media and getting help with blogging and YouTube and all these things. And the truth is you need an attraction method. You need a way to be visible and to get people to know that your offer even exists and that you can help them. But you don't need a website to make sales. Is it going to authenticate you? Yes. Is it going to allow you to charge, you know, 50K, 75K, 100K down the road? Yes. When you're making huge sales like that, you need credibility, right? Although sure. a book will help, as Honoré can tell you. Um, I'd rather spend a hundred grand on a book than on a website, that's for sure. A hundred percent, time and time and time again, because this is physical. They can take it home with them. They can bring it around with them. They can feel this, they can touch this, they can, they can feed off your words versus a website they're gonna scroll in in two minutes, they're done, right? The, the average length of time a person stays on your website is not not long, even if you have optimized it to the nth degree. Anyway, my point is so many people feel like they need to invest all their time and money in the beginning, especially into marketing. And they make that mistake where they're like doing all the things, but then not generating the revenue that they want. And so really it needs to be reversed. In my opinion, in the beginning, you should be spending 80% of your time on selling. 80% of your time figuring out your offer, your messaging for your offer, the landing page for your offer, you should have one offer that sells and that will help you create cash flow for everything else. All right. So, okay, sorry, go ahead, Honoré. Right. It looks like oh. breaking news from Honoré. <laughs> well, so I, I have a, uh, I got a new book uh, and I didn't work on this book. It's Two Weeks Notice by Amy Porterfield. Okay. okay. We have a mutual friend. And so he sent me a copy of her book and I am reading this book. I'm going to pass it on. I don't think she's watching, but to Renee, mm. right? Because we want to get Renee into the, into the entrepreneur world, but she's talking about here are the things that you need to do. And then there's one bullet pointed line. And what you were talking about, Jen, just reminded me, it says, don't waste time on business cards. And she says, Oh, business cards, the first time entrepreneurs rabbit hole of wasted time and energy. It's a rookie move to put so much focus on the look and feel of these little darlings. And yet, for some reason, we just want to. <laughs> and I thought that's so true because you want you feel like I felt like you probably felt like, oh, I need to have all of my ducks in a row before I start talking about my sales offer. I got to show you something. Hold on. I'll be right back. Okay. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to talk about how, when I went to a Tony Robbins seminar, 
uh, there was a woman who was really overweight and she was talking about how she wanted to lose all this weight. And so she was going to go home and like interview trainers and put together a program and buy a scale for her food and order protein shakes and all the things. And, and Tony was like, ma'am, I'll do respect. You just need someone to stand behind you and yell run. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Like stop screwing around and like, just start talking about your business to people. And then when you have made some money, then you can get it. I see people wasting a lot of time getting certification after certification, getting business cards, getting a website, like fussing around, fixing to get organized. And ultimately they need to just talk. Okay, Jen, I killed enough time to get you where we are. <laughs> okay. It's so true. We can talk about all the time wasters because there's so many, but yes. here's the thing. Okay. When I started my business, I was like, I need a business card. And then my husband, Jeffrey's like, well, you can't have a boring business card, right? So I created... Hold on, let me let me that? open it. This is a fresh one. By the is way, a, I still have hundreds of these. Is it a caramel? What is that? <laughs> hold on, also, hold on. it's a weapon. You can throw it at someone if they're mean to oh, you. Oh, it's a challenge coin. It. So it's my business card coin. It's a challenge and coin. It's modeled because my book was sales in a new, is sales in a New York oh, Minute. My brand oh. used to be sales in a New York Minute. So this is modeled after the old New York City subway token. With yeah. The, the, the there's like literally a hole in there. The Y. Look at that. And oh, that has, yeah, my phone number, my email, my website, and my maiden name. And it has everything on there. And I have, though I said hundreds, I have thousands of these still. Where did you get them and how much did they cost? I mean, I'm just asking yeah, for a Yeah, they friend. cost way too much money. <laughs> and I got them from, um, I think it's called Philadelphia Mint. And they make challenge coins like this. I can get you the contact info if you want. Oh. Well, um, I just think it's kind of a fun thing, though. You can. It is a um, really fun thing. Unfortunately, I changed all my branding and my last name, so these are <laughs> been there. These are a little outdated. I wasn't going to ask. However, people love them, and sometimes they ask me for them, so I'll I'll send you guys one. Um, <laughs> you can. You I think can people will it. put Gluckow and then the forward by Jeffrey Gettimer, and now your name is Jen Gettimer. Like, I think people can like do the math on this. I wasn't, it wasn't a leap. It wasn't such well, a for you, for you. Figure it out to figure it out. Well, I realized yeah, she published if you buy before Jen's they book. If you buy Jen's book and leave a review on Amazon, maybe she'll send you a challenge coin. Oh, 100%. Just email yeah. me and I will, I will send you a, people say this is good luck and they keep it in their pocket because they think of it as money. People yeah. say they use it as their golf marker. I think this, my coin has been all some. over. <laughs> I need nine of them, Jen, oh. because nine is an auspicious feng shui number and I'll put them under my mat. Oh, well, what, okay. What is the, what is the meaning of nine? Um, so nine in feng shui is just an auspicious. So then you start with three, three things together, right? And then six things and then eight, eight is auspicious. Eight is, is. You have eight things together. You are eight coins specifically. You are calling in more money. And then nine is like mega auspicious. So if I were you, I'd go into that bucket of a thousand and I'd pull out nine of them and put them in a red envelope under your doormat. And then that would be welcoming wealth into your house. I know you oh. and I are a little on the same page about the oh, look, 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 this is like, that. I'm an engineer. This is nonsense. <laughs> I'm just going, I don't know how eight got in there with three, six and nine, but go ahead. <laughs> well, eight is the infinity symbol there, Mr. Okay. Smart versus, yeah. Well, see, that's the, that's the logic I needed. I had no logic to base that yeah. on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So eight <laughs> is auspicious and nine is extra auspicious. Okay, Actually, nine it is. You'll be getting nine in the mail, both of right. you guys. And and if you write an Amazon review, you you can have nine. I actually I actually already did write my Amazon review. I'm well, no, you're getting one already. No. Yeah, you, you don't get 18 on her. What is 18? What is 18? Right. Is that... Front door and back door. Oh, well, in Judaism, 18 is chai, which means life. Okay. Well, so there you go. Yeah. Uh, I'm going anyway, to find there, them. There are so many time wasters that, that people get into to avoid selling. I really think it's to avoid selling. It's yeah. like, I want to be busy and feel like I'm being productive in my business. So I'm going to go make yeah. a website and make a business card and do this and do that. And post on every social media channel. Guess what? You're not Gary V. Okay. Like <laughs> you can go try to post on every social media channel, but 
get really good at one. Start yeah. with one and get a following and then begin to expand, right? And do it in a way that you're strategically posting to make sales. If you're just posting to post, what's the yeah. what's the point? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so Jen, I got to Oh, go ahead, Andre. <laughs> well, I think you should go first because we're going to go down a rabbit hole a little bit on this conversation. Okay. Well, I just wanted to to make a point that I've seen so many people do all the things you're talking about, build the website, get the and they don't even have a product to sell yet. You're like, "How do I what do, what do I do?" And they're like they don't have the book, they don't have the course, they don't have the services laid out. They have to like whip up a contract. They don't even have that mm -hmm. set up for services even though they're going to sell you services. I'm like, "Dude, talk about putting the, you know, the cart before the horse." Um, and I think that a lot of that's just influenced by what they observe, right? And they haven't experienced yet that 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 th what you see of a business is what you intentionally see of a business. Like that's what they're showing you if they're doing it right on purpose, right? <laughs> if they're not doing it right, just because they're pulling the trigger to try and be visible yep. uh, to your point about just posting aimlessly or, or just posting without like a really good strategy in place. Um, and you can't sell without a thing. You have to be able to sell something, whether it be your services or a product. So if you're out there and you're an entrepreneur and you're focused all on all this marketing, like, like you were talking about, Jen, and you haven't put that same amount of blood, sweat, and tears into developing your product, your offer, the thing you're actually going to exchange money for, you're inverted. Like you need to just hit pause and go back okay. to okay. the drawing board. It's one of the reasons why I went to Honoré to learn about books, because I didn't want to build a book that wasn't published and produced the right way, right? And then go into this full-on annual marketing effort to put, promote a book that you didn't even put the effort into developing the right way. Right. So like, just love that message. Thank you for sharing that with us. Honore, take me down the rabbit hole. Yeah. So I, I want to talk about making an ask because we are specifically having this conversation because of a couple of asks that I made. So the first ask was to Lucas. Lucas showed up in publishing PhD hmm. and the Q and A's. And as you all can tell, I'm an excellent judge of character and Lucas <laughs> has excellent character and he's just a really likable guy. And Go I on. wanted him just do a hair flip and just say <laughs> um, uh, I wanted him to be in the Empire Builders Mastermind. I felt like he had the right um, qualities and characteristics of the person to be in the mastermind. Thank and you. so I did what I think salespeople forget to do or or procrastinate doing which is sending an email and saying, hey, I would like to talk to you about something. Can we have a conversation? I thought I was in trouble, by the way. <laughs> yes, because I, I spend my time calling people and telling them they're in trouble. It's like, dude, what did I say on Thursday's Q&A? Yeah, so I want to talk to you about your behavior, Lucas. Totally out of line. That is hysterical. No, no what I wanted to do was say, you know, hey, I, I think you're great. And I'd like to present this to you. And in and in my mind, just for the record, I never have energy on whether someone's going to say yes or no. I know what I'd like to have happen, but I know everyone has their timing and timing is everything. So the so I asked, because you have to ASK to GET, I said, hey, Lucas, I have this mastermind. I'd like you to consider being in it. And I was expecting him to say, no, not now, maybe later. Let me think about it. Let me check with my wife. <laughs> Something, right? All of the all of the things. He ended up saying yes, and the rest is history. We're here. The second ask was I follow Jen. Jen, I follow people who write about sales, who are experts in sales. And I don't remember how I came upon you. I also don't remember how I realized that you were connected to Jeffrey <laughs> because it was pre look out a gittimer. But then I just started doing what I recommend people do, which is get on somebody's radar, be a giver, be friendly, read their stuff, comment on their stuff, be kind, be nice. And in the back of my mind, everything you would say, Jen, I was like, oh, we would totally be friends. <laughs> oh, we totally agree about this. Oh, my gosh. This is something we are uh, in alignment on, right? And so the whole time my intention was, you know, if, if all if all the stars align and we have a pink moon, then we would probably be friends. And guess what? 
<laughs> do, you, do you remember you emailed me and you're, I think you said something like, I, I read your book. I think we have a lot in common. Could we meet? I was like, Honore wants to meet with me. <laughs> but okay, here's the fun thing. Until just now, I had no idea you knew who I was. Oh yeah, of course I knew who you were. Okay, well, <laughs> how would how would you? I have no because idea. You wrote books. Okay, well, so that's another thing. Then is if you want to know someone, you want to work with someone, you want to sell someone something, right? I, I'm not trying to sell you anything, Jen, obviously, right? This was just a personal, this was a I'm personal buying. request. <laughs> You're buying. I'm in. Here's my card. What are we doing? <laughs> Jen Gidmer is now an EBM for next year. <laughs> That's, right. <laughs> That's right. Yes. Um, so if you want that, you have to just ask somebody. I think what people are afraid of, which is silly, right? Is that Lucas was going to say, no, I don't want to be in your mastermind and you're stupid. <laughs> so <laughs> This is dumb. This is dumb. Why would anyone do that? Like, I've never had anyone. You know, the, what, only, that, the only challenge I ever get from someone is, wow, that's a lot of money. That's the only thing I hear when it comes to my custom book publishing services. And I'm always like, well, you can always go over to XYZ. They charge two and a half times more than I do. Have a good time with that because they won't care about you as much as I do. But that's the only pushback I ever get. I only ever get, well, let me think about that. Or, that's a little outside of my budget or let me aim for next time. Or I want to do that at some point, follow up with me, but I don't know about you, but I never get the thing that I think people are afraid of. Oh. Yeah. Okay. This is a rabbit hole. I love it. So I have helped so many <laughs> service-based business owners, people who are making sales over the phone or they have to give, they give a, pro a proposal and then mm -hmm. they have to have a conversation about what's inside that proposal. And then they have to try to convert it to a sale. And I'll have people come to me who are who say, this happens so many times, my discovery calls aren't going well, people aren't buying. But they seem so interested on the call and then they're not buying. I'm like, huh, okay, so walk me through a call. What happens, right? Like, how does it go? And I'll, I'll, at, I'll ask them about the ask. Like, so when did you... When I'm hearing ask, I know, I see. <laughs> I'm loving when this. You, when did you ask for the sale? Because they'll walk me through the whole call and then they'll be like, well, and then they didn't buy. I'm like, how did you ask? Because they conveniently skipped that part. And they're like, no, I, I didn't ask. They they were talking about their proposal. So I'm like, they're not a mind reader they don't know that you believe that you can help them. Like you got to ask if you don't ask, you don't get. And so, yep. yes, there's a 50% chance they'll say no. There's also a 50% chance they'll say yes. And if you don't ask, there's a hundred percent chance they're going to say no, right. Or they're not going to move forward. So yeah. your odds become 50% greater. If you just ask, if you, when, so tell when us so tell us how we ask, Jen, because I know how I ask people, but what, give us some asking questions when you're working with someone. What are some asking questions? So I believe it doesn't need to be this formal. Like people make such a big deal about the ask. Yeah. It should just be a natural part of the conversation. So if you and I are talking about writing a book or you're going to help me with publishing my, my next book, you give Which me- I am. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you, give me, you give me the details about what that looks like. And then you might ask me some questions, right? You're, you've already, you've, let's talk about the conversation as a whole, okay? You've already understood why I want to write a book, why it matters to me. So now you understand my why for buying. You understand my time sensitivity around it. it you know, do I have an event coming up like a TED Talk or whatever that I might need my book by a certain date? So now yep. you understand my urgency or am I just like one of those, I'm going to be writing it forever. You know, you need to, you need to know that. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, then you are going to tell me how you can help me and why working with you is, is so much better than trying to do it alone or trying to do it with one of these companies that are two and a half times the price. And now you're already um, price anchoring. Okay. Then we get to the move forward part. And you just say, so when would you like to get started? Okay. You're not asking them, would you like to get started with me? No, you're assuming the sale. When would you like to get started assumes that they're going to buy from you and 
that it it's it's just a matter of when. Same thing with with building a course or monetizing your course, right? It's like when would you like to get started? That's my favorite question. Yeah. I love it. I love it. It's it's just that easy. Oh yeah. People yeah. make it like this big just thing. They start easy. sweating. I've seen people on discovery calls with me and they start turning like, you know, red and get blotchy and they get all nervous like do I want to work with them? And I'm thinking like, if I say no, like this isn't the end of the world. Like, like the world is not ending. Zoe thinks it is. The world <laughs> is not ending. Zoe if says I'm, it's the end of the world if Jen Gettimer rejects you because you know you're it's a lot of pressure to sell to a salesperson yeah. to someone who's a sales trainer, Jen. It's a I lot of pressure. That. No, I understand it isn't. that. I'm but just saying people are making it like it is. <laughs> I understand that people are making it like it is, but I don't yeah. think they do it with just me. I think they do that with every Everyone. call. And, yeah. and here's the thing. It's not a big deal. Yeah. The, the best thing you can do is get a no if they don't want to buy from you. Because right. then you can move on and go yeah. to your what I call N-O, next opportunity. Okay. Oh, I love that. Because otherwise you're like stuck in the like, do they want to buy from me? I have to keep following up. I have to keep asking like, let's, maybe they need to talk to their wife or their husband or whatever, their cat. And like, you're waiting and waiting and then you're not focused on new opportunities. No, you got to go build that pipeline. Mm. I, I love that you're bringing that up because um, <laughs> is we have like this, I, I don't know where it comes from. Uh, maybe it's the aversion to being sold to through all these years of commercials and, you know, the, the perception of like bad sales guys. Like, I'm going to go buy a car. I'll go, God, right. You know, don't go to the, you know, dealership X because they're just going to pressure you from the time you walk in the door. You're not that. That's not you. That's not your, it took me a while to get comfortable with selling because I had to realize like I'm helping people. And if I'm not comfortable giving yeah. something to someone that'll help them, then how can I ever a expect them to to buy from me? B, what am I actually doing? If if I don't believe that wholeheartedly, which I did, then what am I doing? And it took me like someone else pointing that out to me. Like I said, I had a sales coach that said, I don't know why you're so um, hesitant to just walk them right into your solution. And I couldn't figure that out. And I just realized that like I had this programming in my head. I think it was from growing up with a bunch of pessimistic, angry New Yorkers. But. <laughs> It is programming. It, it is. We believe we have grown up to think that selling is bad or that yeah. being if you if you're asking for the sale, you're doing something wrong. Guess what? People who get stuff for free don't have the same kind of transformation that people that actually invest their money. Money is energy. So right. the minute I put my dollars down and say I'm committed to this program, whatever it is, coaching program, EBM, whatever it is. I'm going to be so much more committed to seeing my own outcome through than if I'm just getting a free ride. Yeah, yeah. I love that. And I also think too, and I would love for you to speak to this, don't have all your sales eggs in one basket. Don't have one person you're asking. And if they say no, then you get to live in your car. <laughs> so right? I'm in a bunch of Facebook groups and in one of them, people, someone literally wrote, something along the lines of like, if, if I, if I don't get these sales right now, like I'm going to have to shut my business down. I'm like, Oh, this is horrible because right, right. Here, sales is energy. I just said money is energy. Sales is energy too. And so remember back in, in grade school or high school when, um, when like that boy who like wanted to go out with you or Lucas, maybe that girl. And they were so moody or desperate. They, you, they, you, that desperation just repelled your wanting to go yes. out with them. Right. Yes. Like and if, if it wasn't you, you have a friend who you were like, Oh yeah, I like that. And that, that needy desperate energy doesn't work in sales either. Oh, thank you, Karen. I'm so yeah, excited. Get, get used to the to the to the nice comments popping up under you while you're talking. I love it. I love it. Yeah. But that that needy, desperate energy, people can feel that, right? And that's why people. That's why car salesmen get a. I don't know why not car saleswomen, but car sales people. People. They get a bad rap because they get that pushy rap. Well, not all of them. I I have a car salesman that I love. Like yeah. Eli, yeah. the car guy is freaking amazing, and yep. he's only gonna get you 
what you want and he's not going to push you into anything. Right. And he's going to tell you every detail about it and follow up after to make sure you're getting the right service. So not everyone's like that, right? We have to reframe sales in our head to realize, A, if you go after it with needy, desperate energy, you're screwed because you're actually repelling your sales versus attracting sales and attracting new clients. And B, like you're right, Honoré, don't put all your sales eggs in one basket. That's just like, I hate to say it's common sense. I'm in trouble because of everyone I'm talking to says yes. I'm in trouble. That, that's a, and yeah. that is a great right? problem to have. Yeah, yeah, I don't want everyone. I want some to say yes. I would like some to say yes in Q3 <laughs> and Q4 <laughs> and Q1. Because if all of the, the what do we call them? All the popcorn kernels that uh, I have out there? Clients. Actually, I like to call them probable, probable clients. Probable purchasers. Uh -huh. Probable purchasers. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. We I think we uh drink from the same water fountain <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> the same fountain of knowledge. Um, then then it's a it's problematic. But I'm always, I don't like this term, but it's a sales term prospecting. I'm always looking for people that I would like to work with in my mastermind, in my custom publishing business with courses that I sell. I'm always looking for people because timing is everything and not everybody's timing is right now. And when would you like to get started? Could be next week, next month, next quarter, next year. I'm still going to be here. But if I'm, if I'm putting all my eggs on like, well, they better say yes and they better pay me tomorrow or else they, it, people can feel that they may not say it. Right but they can feel it and they're like, why is she so desperate if she's good at what she does? Right. Why does she need my money right now? And I want your money, but I don't need your money. People and would actually rather, energy. oh, sorry. But which is just different energy. I want versus I need. Right, mm -hmm. right. And people would rather energy. work with you if they feel like you don't need this. Like, like they right. feel like you're making a spot for them. Right. Like when I spoke to Karen, for example, she's like, okay, I have this book. I have this book. I have this book. I can put you in right here. It's like, okay, cool. Well, oh yeah. Girlfriend is busy now. You got to like, get on her calendar like months in advance. Cause like she yeah. all fancy. I'm telling yeah. you. Yeah. And like, that's amazing because I don't, she, she wasn't like, well, I have these like six months of openings. When do you need it? Right. Then I'd be like, Oh, how she a good editor. What's going on? You know, <laughs> but she's like, I have this time frame. I will, I will slide you in. Like, yes, I felt, I felt lucky that she's going to make a spot for me. Right. Yeah. Which is very different sales energy or buying energy. Good job, Karen. Point. You're crushing it. <laughs> which is very different buying energy than, than, and, and you create the buying energy for your customers. Right. You yeah. create that. So yeah. I yeah. sent a text yesterday. I was following up with someone who's very busy, 10 businesses, very successful. And my text message said, is it time for us to continue our conversation about global domination through book publishing? <laughs> and he texted back and he was like, not yet. Give me a few more weeks. Okay. Was like, that was it. Right. And I figured he'd get a kick out of like, because when we talked, he was not going to write a book. And by the time we ended our meeting, he was like, maybe I should do a series. Mm. <laughs> That's funny. Here's the thing. People buy on their timeline. Your timeline of when you need to pay your bills and when you need to make payroll <laughs> and when you need to do whatever you need to do doesn't matter to them. No. They don't care. They yeah. don't know about it. They don't want to know about it. And it's they not their concern it. and they don't need right. to feel about it either. Right. But when you show up with that, like, oh, buy for me right now, please, please, please. I need to. No. Repels. Um, begging for business. Said... Oh, begging sorry. for business is like marrying for money. Ooh, You're going to earn every one. dime twice. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds terrible. <laughs> oh, boy. Run, run. <laughs> Well, but if you beg the client, how many, raise your hand if you've ever taken on a client because you needed the money and sure. then five minutes into the process, you were like, when is this over? Yep. Yep. When is yep. this over? We have yep. all done it. Everyone watching has done it. We have all taken on clients because we were like, well, I really need, I really need this business. I really need this money. <laughs> no soup. That's all he eats, Karen. He needs this <laughs> What's wrong with soup? 
I love soup. <laughs> the soup Nazi, Lucas. Come on, pay attention. I know, um, I'm joking. I thought you were digging on me. We've all taken on that client and then regretted it because they were a PETA, pain in the arse, or they were high maintenance, or they had zero boundaries, or they were texting us at eight o'clock on a Saturday night with a quick question. <laughs> and and we regretted it. If you had been like, why should I take you on as a client, which is a different energy? Right? It's a totally different energy. Yeah. Yeah. It's a totally different energy. And so you have people, I'm sure, who are thinking, well, what if I actually do need the money? Cool. Then make an offer that scales that you can bring in the money yeah. from that you can sell yeah. all day long. One one offer to one type of person that you can yeah. put on Evergreen and sell all the time so that yeah. you're not begging for business because begging yeah. for business doesn't work. And it, it feels uncomfortable for you. It feels uncomfortable for them. And it doesn't result in sales. When I think or if it does, it's a sale you're going to regret at some point. Someone yeah. will take you up on it because they're like, well, she's desperate. I would have paid 50, but she took 20. Right. Now I'm going to beat her to a bloody pulp. I'm having a conversation like that later. And the person who referred me has warned me. Going to negotiate, going to try to get this for that. And I'm like, no, nope, my fee is my fee because I'm awesome. So do you want awesome and to pay my full fee or do you want to try to get a bargain because there are bargain businesses that will that will handle you and please go bother them because i work with awesome people only uh, so that's a really good point about not negotiating your fee um i work uh, i work i i'm hiring a new real estate broker to sell our our condos and i asked him i said would you consider taking because it's a it's a lot of units that we're giving to him. Mm -hmm. So would you consider taking a reduction in fee? And as I was saying, consider a reduction, he didn't even let me finish. And he was like, no. Like it was like a hard, fast, absolutely no. Like we don't have to work together. But if we do work together, my fee is my fee. My, my fee is fair. My fee is my fee. And I'm like, okay, you know, I had to ask. He goes, look, I've spent too much time cultivating relationships in this industry, doing what I do. I've been in the business for 30 years and I'm the best at what, what I do in our area. And I've, I earn my fee and I don't take a reduction. And I loved that he would not negotiate with me, that he was so firm about it because... What did that show me? That's chance. how he's going to handle our property when a yes. potential buyer comes. Yes. Right? Yes. Like, yes. boom. Oh, I, you just did yes. that so well. You're, you're good at that. That's how you're going to do it again. Right? And that's what your clients need to see. They need to hear from you, like, that you're confident in what you offer and that you believe in it, going back to the, the beginning, that you believe in the, their outcomes so strongly that your fee is fair. Your prices are fair. Your prices are firm. Boom. Yeah. So we're uh, almost at an hour, Jen. I would oh, love for you. I know. Can you believe it? It's you crazy. You don't have to go. You can just stay here forever. <laughs> we'll just stop being live and then we'll have the real conversation. Just kidding. <laughs> um, kidding, not kidding. Sorry, not sorry. Um, I, so we talked about this. This session was called sales without the stress. Could you just kind of outline three things that people could do to make more sales and eliminate the stress. Just start having more fun in your life in general, <laughs> not just like in sales. Okay? Go to the beach, like, everybody. Go Be to there. the beach, go dance, turn on music. Like seriously, like up your vibe, up your frequency, because when you do that, when when you are are shining on the outside, what's coming in on the inside, when you can emit that, it, it is more fun, right? Go jump in a pool, do something that like literally you would do as a child and, and enthuse your inner, your inner child. And I promise people will feel that in your business. And if you're like, well, I'm a financial analyst and it's very serious and that's that. Guess what? People still buy from people. Okay. They need to feel you like feel yep. how great of a person you are. And if you're so serious, no one's going to believe that because that's freaking robotic. Okay. Just have a little fun. Just have a little fun. Um, so yeah. number one, 
check your frequency because when you are, when you check your frequency and you up, you have your big sales energy and you're doing the things like Honore talks about feng shui for business. One of the things I did this morning to get in the groove of everything, I started sweeping. Okay. It sounds so silly, but I literally got out my broom and I was sweeping my patio and then I went to my front door and I'm like, I got to sweep out the front door and get, you know, like, like just Lucas is like, I'm not, I'm not sweeping nothing. That's I get it. Job. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it, it's like, funny because when when Honore first told me about that, she's like, "Go clean your front." I was like, "We have to we have to have a conversation about this." <laughs> she's like, "What?" I'm like, "Like you have to tell me how cleaning anything is going to fix this," and she's like, "Dude, it just gets you in a better mind space, like headspace." Yes. Like you need to step away, and go do something, and come back, and it'll be better. And I'm like, "Son of a okay, that's what I needed to hear, right?" It's not because like magic pixie dust just rains down and solves all my problems. It's right. because I'm part of my problem at that point. I got to get the heck away from my work and go do things. But people don't like to hear that about themselves. You know, they don't like to think they're part of the problem. But in that sales conversation, like you were talking about, their lack of confidence, no one can give that to them. No. Right. It comes from within. Yeah. Yeah. Stepping okay. away from your work. You yeah. got to do that yourself. Go ahead. Sorry. Exactly. Okay. So number one is like, go do something to have fun and bring that confidence and energy in so you can exude it out. Number two is, um, uh, think about your customer's outcome because when you think about your income, you're only making it about you. You need to think about their outcome. Okay. Mm -hmm. Your income will come naturally when you think about their outcome. And that makes it so much easier because then it's not about you. Like what are you, all the things and focus on sales. <laughs> Stop making sales a thing that you push off to your tomorrow to-do list. Okay. Do yeah. something today. That's going to help you move the sale further and have fun with it. Have also fun. read sales in a New York minute and listen to Jen's podcast, which is your success frequency, which is all about bringing your vibe up. Right. And it sounds funny because I, the, the, the engineers in the crowd, um, <laughs> are going to be the ones going, what is my, what does my success frequency have to do with it? And it's like, it has to do with everything. Everything is energy. Everything. If you have desperate energy, you're going to have no sales. If you have fantastic, I'm on fire energy, you will make more sales. You will, more things will come to you auto magically, magically, um, intuitively and synergistically. And so Part of the reason I'm, I, we asked Jen to be on today and we're recommending her book and her podcast is because success frequency, Jen, correct me if I'm incorrect. I'm making this up as I'm going along, but this is what's occurring to me is that your success frequency has to be reignited daily. It's like exercise or taking a shower, right? Like you're, you have to redo it every day. You can't rely on your energy of yesterday. You have to bring, yes. you have to kind of wake up in the morning and go, okay, I'm going to choose to raise my vibe today. And the ways you can do that are to listen to Jen's podcast and read her book and to be in that energy and environment of success. Yes. Yes. 100%. What, let me ask you something. What's one thing you carry everywhere you go besides your wallet? My phone. Yes, your phone. Okay. <laughs> okay. And what do you My do head? with your phone every day? You charge it. Okay. Your phone doesn't no. just last forever. Like, no. oh, look, the battery is charging amazing. right wow. now. Right. Okay. And there's you my charge, dog. You charge your phone every day. What happens when the battery dies? It drains. You can't use it. And yeah. sometimes we yeah. start to try and use our mind and my and our and our physical energy and our mental energy when we're drained. Yeah. You need to recharge yourself every day, just like you charge your phone. Yeah. Yeah. And if your bank account balances are low and your sales are low, then you need to charge yourself up. And I always say this to everybody. Like if you're not feeling it, then don't talk to anybody. Right. Go get happy in the same pants you got frustrated in before you talk to anybody because <laughs> you're going to put that energy out and the energy you put out is going to come back to you multiplied. So it's just going to come back with more bills and more balances and, and more frustration 
But if you can flip the switch to on, you are going to get such better results. 100%. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for having me. This oh so my fun. gosh. So we could, we could, we could talk about this stuff for hours. We'll see you next Thursday, Jen. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Introducing the newest co-host of the EBMC Thursday Live. She's like, I what have I done? Oh, man. She's like, where did, where did you put those frustrated pants? Let me go grab those. <laughs> the happy pants. The happy well, before pants. We go, before we go, I have to talk about my book, y'all, that I released this week. Did yes. You all us. So for one second. <laughs> yes. Um, I just yelled ya. Yeah. The plural of y'all is all y'all. So all y'all, just give me one second. So I released the best-selling book formula this week, write a book that will make you a fortune. Um, I was very blessed that Lucas and Jen were both um, Mine is in instrumental in, I know, it's all good, uh, instrumental in bringing this book to life. But before we go, so available where books are sold, it will really help you to bake in turning your book into a best-selling and best earning book. Before we go, Ahmed has a question that I think we should answer. Wait, well, hold on, hold on. We can't like rush over your book so fast. Like <laughs> the best-selling book formula is the book that you need if you want to create, if you want to write a book, okay? Because it's going to help you not just become a bestseller. Who cares about becoming a bestseller? As you mm -hmm. put it, you want to become a best earner. And yep. you're actually teaching people how to do that and the step-by-step -step in your book. So- you're hired. Go go get that book, okay? Go You're get hired, Jen. You're hired. But we do have this question, and we're at time. That's why I was rushing through it, because I really think all this right, is a good right. question. Uh, is there yeah, any particular time. time of day we should make a sales call? Yes. When you feel your most big sales energy, when you feel it, okay? You got to feel it, and then they'll feel it, because you can, you can say, oh, I'm going to try every day at 8 a.m., because maybe it's before their meetings or after 5 p.m. You can try all that. But if you're not feeling that big sales energy, don't make the call. So wait till you feel it. If Outside you get someone on the phone and you're desperate at 7.58 before their meeting, they're going to be like, why did I answer the call? Sorry, can Lucas. I, can I put a second layer on this? Yeah. Question side? Obviously not answer side. Jen, you're the pro here. Let's say I've got big energy all day, right? I'm just happy to talk about selling things. Is there a time I should avoid? Like what, like when I'm thinking about the client, is there a time when I should just definitely avoid? And I'm thinking of the obvious, but I'd like to hear it, from you. It, I'll go with Honoré's lawyer answer of it depends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it, it really depends on the industry. So if you know, for example, you're calling on uh, nurses and they all take lunch at 12, don't call them on their lunch hour because they don't want to talk to you. Right. Okay. So it really depends industry. It, it depends on what your probable purchaser is doing throughout their day and what's best for them. So what I, one of the ways people work around this is by providing like a calendar link and letting that person choose the time, right? Yes. It's a pretty easy way to work that out. So Ahmed, if you if you don't already have like a, a, an ability to do that, I'd set up a scheduling tool that you can allow the people to pick the time and you just make sure your availability is in the system. Great question. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Jen, so you're awesome. You guys are awesome. Thank, thank you all so much. much for having me here. Yes. So great. So thank you for saying yes. Thank you for talking about sales and selling with our audience. And this video will live for all time on YouTube. So if you are watching the replay of this or you want to head on over to the EBMC uh, YouTube channel, like, share, um, buy Jen's book, listen to her podcast, get in her big sales energy to raise your big sales energy vibe. Is it jengittimer.com? Is that where we're sending people? Yeah, jengittimer.com. Right. Go make a sale. Yeah, yeah make a sale and then put it in the comments. And she's not kidding when she says that she's really like, in, like what makes her happy is that you have those types of successes because when, when, uh, when I've called Jen and said, hey, we're having a really good thing, she's genuinely excited for people that Hell yeah. Are succeeding. So, you know, this isn't a this isn't a front. She really does love seeing people succeed at this stuff. So I have zero poker face. So <laughs> <laughs> there would be no possibility of it being a front. <laughs> you know exactly what I'm thinking at all times. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yes, I love it. Ahmed, go make a sale. Awesome. Go do it. Yes. That's how it goes. Come yes. back and pop it in the comments later. Yes. We want right. to hear about it and we're cheering for you. And we are like we are one heck of a cheer team. <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah. 
I mean, the three of us cheering you see for me you is a big in a deal. cheerleading outfit with pom poms. I am magical. <laughs> Just amazing. I don't know. I, 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 I'm a very visual person. <laughs> I, I pictured him wearing like a pink skirt just now. I, <laughs> they're called lollipops, right? Cheerleaders wear lollipops. Is so that what I, that's called? Yeah. I don't wow. know. Yeah, that's what they, yeah, the cheerleader skirt is called. I, w I did not make the cheer team because I was too awkward and nerdish, but I was, I, w I coveted, I coveted the cheer team. Oh, um, man. So, but I knew what all the pieces uh, were called. So the the skirt is the lollipop. So we're gonna need a we're gonna need a, an actual. There's gonna have to be Photoshop involved. Gonna need <laughs> <Holly>. <laughs> oh man! Oh man! I'm, yeah, my heart, a microphone and some pom poms and a a, a cheerleader. See, skirt. my heart just broke a little bit for little nerdy on array. Not yeah. I know. I turned out all right. I think it's okay. <laughs> I think it's okay, but I think if you asked anyone who rejected me back then, if they were like, "Is she going to be okay?" they they would have been like, "No, no, we don't." Predict good things. <laughs> you should write a book about it. We don't predict good things. Thank you, Jen. I will. I will take that under advisement. <laughs> um, in your spare I time, anyone, I think anyone up to and including everyone it, that knew me back in the day is going, "Ha! Huh, we did not see this coming. We saw something else." <laughs> Their loss. <laughs> Your parents and grandparents saw you coming from a mile away. They're like, yep, five-year-old Jen's going to be like <laughs> mega successful when she grows up. This is happening. <laughs> yep. Oh, yep. I'm pretty sure the Athens High School class of 88 is going, yeah, we just we did not see that. <laughs> nope. 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 We did not oh, see it coming. Nope. I love so it. funny. Yep. All it's right. okay. It's That's a good time. Fun. It's well, character building. I'm, I'm all about, I have a lot of character. Yeah, <laughs> that's for sure. So much character. All right. Jen, all right, well. thank you so much. Thank all of her you. information will be in the show notes, guys. Honore, always awesome with you. Thank Same, you so much. Thank, th thank you, Lucas. Thank you, Jen. This is such a good time. What a great way to go into the rest. I'm going to go make some calls. I'm going to go Hell make yeah. some follow-up calls. Do it. Awesome. Okay. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye. Later, guys.